All right, guys. Well, here we are, and it's midnight now. Uh, Kareem and I had sex. It's like the first time in like a year. I felt like I didn't even know her anymore. I came and I felt guilty. I felt like I was cheating on someone. I was like, babe. She's like, it's me. I'm in here. She's pregnant. Sometimes when girls are pregnant, they just... They don't have sex. Especially when you're ugly, because I've gotten shot out. It's true. My personality carries me, but... I'm in four territory right now. I'm a four. I know it. You know it. Karina knows it. Thank God I've impregnated a beautiful woman like that, because now... I get to keep her forever. No, I love her. She's my best friend. And she really is my best friend. And our relationship has only gotten better as time has gone on. And you got to give credit to a woman like that to deal with somebody like me. You have got to either be stupid or you have to be very tolerant. And she's not stupid. She's very tolerant of me. Because I'm an annoying fucking person. I'm one of those people, I'm just annoying. I piss on the toilet seat. I fart. I shit in my hand and throw it at the wall. The girl at Brian. I'm like, what? I do this when I'm mad to express myself, you know? I'm one of those people that comes a lot, like on the floor, and then there's just these black, like, look like the floor's bruised, but it's just dry cum stains. There's that. So what? I don't think that this series will ever go on YouTube. It may, it may not. What's the point of it? And I thought of this, thought of this the other day, right? I think Boston was like, really the best series I've done in a long time. This is some of my best work. I was just into it. Not to say that I'm not into this material, but I feel like sometimes I need like, not a break, but I need to like recharge the old battery, right? So I thought about it. I was like, all right, People like prison stories. There's so many you haven't heard, but I don't know which is which. So that's why I'm doing this series. It's Shaky Jake Redux. And the thing is, is there's a lot of material. I haven't checked on comments for a while. This weekend, I'm going to... Uh, oh my God, I'm tired. I'm going to a rap video. I'm like, hey guys. I'm the only one with a small dick. I'm like, it's okay. I forgot what I was going to say. But there was some joke, but I was just, I'm that tired where I'm like, fuck, all right, I need to drink coffee. Uh, that has never happened to me. I've never been, like, in the middle of saying something and my brain just stops working. I'm like, ugh. I'm just stuck. That was, that was bizarre. Normally I would start over, but we have a time deficit here, so we're just going to keep going. This is the thing, though. I'm going to be doing a rap video this weekend. I'm going to live stream it. There's going to be very famous hip-hop artist there i think that's what it's you know people always do that they're like yeah fool we're gonna be hanging out with g easy post malone's gonna be there it's gonna be fucking fire dog and then you get there and it's like what's up i'm dj soy sauce i'm from ventura the other dudes couldn't come but i got like 1700 followers on ig you want to take a picture with me? You know the type. So I don't know. Maybe the people are full of shit. Maybe I'm going to go and there's not... And I'm not going to say that these people are full of shit because I like them a lot. I'm making a statement on human nature. Humans just make shit up. They're like, hey, come over. Hang out this weekend. We're going to be with Morgan Freeman. Dope. And then... You go over there, and Morgan Freeman's nowhere to be found. They're, like, having a Morgan Freeman marathon. Like, dude, let's watch Shawshank next. And you're like, wait, I thought he was going to be here in spirit, bro. He's here in spirit. People do shit like that, and it's like, what the fuck? Especially in L.A. Motherfuckers love to name drop. I am guilty of it myself. 
It's just how shit is here. It's fake and it's weird and, you know, so. Oh, I'm, I'm really, really, really tired. But you know what? I'm going to put one out right now. I'm going to put out for you guys. My mom used to say that I'd be in high school and I'd like a girl, right? My mom is so cool. I love my mom so much. She'd be like, she's like, okay, so how'd it go with Courtney? Because I, I, I always told my parents, like, yeah, I'm going on a date with this girl. I'm like, I don't know. She, I think she's a lesbian. My mom's like, why did she not put out? And I'm like, no, she didn't. That doesn't mean she's a lesbian. She's probably a respectable girl. I'm like, mom, two of my homeboys ran a train on her last weekend. She's not respectable. She just didn't want to fuck me. My mom's like, oh. Write a list of things you need at the grocery store. See you later. You know, my mom was always cool. I could talk to her like that. Uh, and people always trip out. I'm like one of those guys where people come over and they trip the fuck out that I talk to my mom like that. They're like, that's disrespectful. I'm like, you don't get it. That's just how my family is. They don't care. They're cool. They think it's funny, you know, and they do. That's they have like a very dark, twisted sense of humor. They like my videos. My mom's like, ha. Huh. I watched one. Oh, she doesn't talk like that. She's like, I watched some of your videos and you say fuck too much. You shouldn't say that, especially butt fuck. It's weird. She watched the videos and she likes them. So, all right, anyway, let's get into the story. I'm being annoying now and just being repetitive and shit. All right, so where we left off last time, of course, I am in the throes of methadone withdrawal. Now, last night, I got, I, you know, honestly, I was getting really into the story. I don't know if I did a good job. I don't know if it was as good as the first time I did it, but... I was really getting into it. You know, I know that people like really liked this series when it first came out. I have no idea what I went over and what I didn't. Um, you know, Albuquerque was one video so I could watch that, but I'm not gonna go back and watch all my old fucking videos. Um, and when I was on the Dopey podcast today, I made that point. He's like, how do you remember stories? And I told him, and I've said it before, it's because of all the rehabs, all the jails, all the prisons, all the homeless encampments that I've chilled at. Yo, Ryan, Todd's going to the store right now. You need anything? I'm like, I don't know, maybe some firewood, man. It's fucking freezing up here. Todd, firewood. All right. All the homeless encampments that I've been at, what I would do for entertainment is I would tell stories. And once people would hear me tell stories, they would want me to tell more stories because they like me telling stories. Like, tell stories, storyteller. <laughs> so, what the fuck's the point? So they would be recycled. You know, I've said, I've, these stories are recycled, tell them over and over and over again, and they're preserved in the memory. So anyway, so, here I go, back on the monologue shit. If it, can, if it does make it to YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, check out patreon.com slash Ryan Leone. Now, let's get into the story where we left off last time. Uh, the nurse comes in the middle of the night. I'm bang. Ba, ba, ba. Help me! It was like some last of the Mohican shit. Like, I felt like I should be saying this shit into a seashell or something. Should have had like a bamboo rain stick or whatever. <laughs> bamboo rain stick. How do I think of shit like that? It's a random thing to think about. Um, so she gives me an 800 milligram ibuprofen. And she's like, it's the strong kind. Pulled a lot of strings. I was like, I remember just being in shock. Like, fuck, it's, it's, this is a nightmare. It's not going to end. And the night got absolutely horrific past that point. Now, we had talked about a very interesting phenomenon of the bones splitting at the seams. And it feel, it doesn't just feel like it's splitting, like like a compound fracture. It feels like you're in like a Spider-Man movie and there's like all these like meandering like splinters of fucking bone shooting out of you from all different directions. It feels like you're being like twisted apart internally. It's chill. It's mellow. How do you feel? Oh, I'm all right. 
Yeah, no, I'm just dealing with it. Yeah, right. Said nobody on methadone ever. You know, I was dying, man. Dying. So I had the mattress on the floor. My... Paisicelli's like, ne na nu na na, ne na na. Starts like clapping. I'm like, dude, please shut the fuck up. I know you understand that. Shh, no moss. Brain's like, oh, and he like rolls back over. He was doing that periodically throughout the night. He thought that like cooing to me in fucking Mexican, or in Mexican, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, the guy was cooing to me in Mexican. You can't talk like that, right? The guy was like, I think trying to offer comfort by singing something in Spanish, like a love song, who knows what he was talking about. It was probably some nasty shit. Some soup. Okay, anyway. Uh, and one thing that I had gotten, I don't know if I had uh, mentioned this, there was a couple things that I remember that I had procured that first day. Maybe the second day, first or second day that I was in there when I was trading heroin. And by God damn, did I wish that I had that. Like, I'm one of those really sloppy guys with drugs. I'm really sloppy. Like, I always get caught. If I relapse, Karina knows, girlfriends know, people that have nothing to do with my life know. Some random person at DMV is like, hey man. I know that you relapsed. I'm like, okay, I did. You caught me. I'm just one of those people that like, like I'm not neat. I'm just messy as fuck. You know. It's really, it's, it's like in catastrophic proportions. So you got to be like really neat in hero, uh, in prison and you like, you know, the heroin that I was selling, these guys would cut into like, they made like 50, 60, 70, 80 bags of dope that they could sell off it. These little tiny specks. So everybody's doing specs. When I was doing it, I'm doing what I'm normally doing. I'm doing like quarter gram, half gram. I'm like, uh, I'm going to conserve. I'm going to do a quarter gram. So one of the things that I had procured was a radio. This little electronic translucent sony radio that like was digital and had a clock on it or you know it told the time and you could program you could pre-program stations so you know in la there's k-rock there's an oldie station there's country there's hip-hop there's am talk radio and i remember that was the absolute only thing that gave me any comfort. I mean, I don't, I can't remember specifically how much that I beat off, but I'm going to go ahead and say that it's safe to assume that I was jerking off throughout the night. There's never like, oh man, I don't feel like jerking off today. I'm not going to do it. I've never had a day like that. I beat off every single day. I do not go a day without coming. I can't. It like makes me mad. Why are you in such a bad mood? I didn't come today. And the world's gloomy because of it. Fuck. Hold on, I have to get so I don't even know where the dog is. <laughs> dog was like, and then I get yelled at. You know, Korean's like, where are you going? Like, because I'm doing a video. I talked about this when I'm doing a video. The dogs are your responsibility. So, uh, the radio was like my one conduit to comfort when I was in this situation. I'm hallucinating at this point. That had already started. I believe I was talking about that in the last video and I was looking up at the cell ceiling and I was watching thunder and lightning come out of the ceiling. It looked like it was projecting. It looked like a hologram of lightning strikes were like crackling out of the ceiling. The worst part about it is that I knew that I was hallucinating. Why it was weather themed was probably metaphorical because of the storm that my life was like going through at that moment. 
Because you gotta remember, it's not just being sick on methadone. It's the fact that Jenny had just told me that this dude David tried to rape her. It's that my attorney's telling me that I might do 10 years. It's that my parents know that I'm in prison and that I'm gonna be probably staying in prison for years. Because what I had done, I don't know if I ever had explained this to you, I'm sure that I have. Before I went to prison, I had a really good relationship with my mom and dad. Now, I was on a lot of methadone. I was on a lot of heroin. But I was going and hanging out with them all the time, spending a lot of time with them. I love my parents. You know, I'm an only child. That's the only family that I have or that I had at the time. Now I have Nico, Karina, and another baby on the way. But at the time, it was just my parents and with interchangeable girlfriends, a couple dudes that I picked up along the way from Thailand. I'm like, yeah, that's Mimi. It's Michi. No, no, sorry. Lame joke again. So, remember, my mom would take me to breakfast on Saturday because the methadone clinic would dose you later on those days. Instead of having to go at 6 a.m., on those days, you could go at like 8 a.m. So my mom would come get me and she'd take me to breakfast. I would like pull out a roll of hundreds and I'd just be like, peel one off and just like crinkle it, like throw it on the table. Breakfast was like 30 bucks. I'd be like, keep the change, you filthy animal. And like the waitress would just look at me like I was a creep or something. And by that point, I remember I was like, I looked like a parade blimp. And my mom had told me, Ryan, I want you to stop doing what you're doing. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm a producer for Spike TV. She's like, Ryan, you haven't worked for Spike TV for two years. I'm like, oh, they still pay me just that in case I want to come back. I didn't even have like a valid reason or excuse of why I had money like that. And the thing is, is like my mom owned a, a retail store Santa Barbara called the Paper Star. They sold uh, wedding accessories. They sold the dog is gnawing at the door. Just give me a second. I'll be back. Ah, doggy, ah, dog. Oh, I hear him burp. And um, you know, in Santa Barbara, the rent for a commercial place like that is pretty expensive. It's like twelve thousand dollars a month. Now, she sold greeting cards and wedding accessories. Do you know how hard? And then she had, like, employees that worked for her. Do you know how hard it is to cover a nut like that where you're paying employees, then you have to come up with $12,000 rent, and it was my mom's passion. My dad did it because he wanted her to be happy, but she fucking couldn't come up with the rent a lot because you have to, I mean, dude, you make, like, 15 cents a greeting card. For it to work, she would have to sell tens of thousands of them in a month. She sold, like, a couple hundred. Like, it, it was doomed to fail just because of how expensive Santa Barbara is. So she was telling me, I really want you to stop what you're doing. But then she'd be like, hey, can I borrow 12 grand? And I'd always give it to my mom. Always took care of her. I was like, there you go. My dad would take me out on Sunday. And we had a very similar relationship. I was buying, I bought him like his first iPhone. Back then they were really expensive. You had to pay like, I don't remember, like $900. Like you couldn't like finance the phone. I just had to pay for it outright. And back then it was like futuristic, you know? People thought you were like a Jetson if you had one of those. And it didn't really do much. It had like the, the fucking, the Dow Jones on it. You're like, damn, this is high tech. And it would just sit there. That's like all it did. You're like, this app is dope show the ticker back then that was a big deal but i was buying my dad expensive gifts we smoked weed for the first time together and i went and i go watch movies with them and they really cherished that time i got my mom her little yellow lab puppy brava and everything was really good between us and then when i caught that case and the dea called me and i knew that i had to go turn myself into the u.s marshals what i did is I thought I was going to get out, remember? I was like, I'm so rich. They can't incarcerate me. I had like 11 grand. No, 
I had more than that, but um, I didn't have enough to like get out of federal prison. You, know, you have to have like billions to do that. So I thought there was like in the off chance that bail didn't work, and of course the junkie optimism again. I'm like, all right, I'm for sure gonna get out. I don't even really need to prepare for this. That's how confident I am. Because I had no idea. In state system, you go to jail, you get a bails bonds, then you're out like six hours later. So I had written my parents a letter. And it was really emotional. It said something to the effect of, if you're reading this, I didn't make it. This isn't your fault. I love you very much. This is my addiction. And I'm dealing with it like a man. You know, I got cracked and I'm facing it. I'm not telling on anybody. I turned myself in. I didn't realize that what I was doing was actually stand up and solid. I didn't know that I was like a solid ass convict. And the irony is like all these, oh, I just took a bowling pin on my ass. And they like take their fucking fake leg off and like knock their chick out. Make me a waffle, slut. Those kind of dudes usually are rats. Straight up. You know, people like me that, like, are principled with stuff like that are pretty rare. But I didn't know that at the time. You know, I thought that everybody was solid. Fucking fraud. Made of statue cement. Blah, look how solid I am. My eyeballs are compass. Blah. No, I thought that everybody was like that, but no, no, I was the only solid statue guy. So that was one thing that was, and the reason I'm going into my parents in that letter is because I told Jenny when I went to jail, I said, look, if I don't get bail, give this to my parents. And she did, and I had to read that, and then I had to call them, and they were crying. My mom was, they were sad, they knew I was going away for years. So to deal with their reaction to it, because it wasn't anger, it was dire concern. I was 23 at the time. My attorney was telling me 10 years. As a 23-year-old, thinking about getting out of this place when I was 33, was terrifying, of course. But to my parents... They just couldn't even bear the thought. It was really painful for them to think that I could be locked up for a decade like that. They were just disappointed. They weren't mad. And you know what? I don't even know if they were disappointed. I think they were just sad, to be honest. So in that cell that night, thinking about all of those things, I wept. I wept like a fucking bitch, you know? And... I remember sitting there and I have my headphones on and the only thing that's bringing me comfort at this point is music because when I closed my eyes, the hallucinations didn't stop. I'd close my eyes and I'd see like tornadoes and shit. I'm like, no, it's worse in there. Fuck. And I'd like open my eyes and I'd see the lightning and I'd see the clouds and I'd see all that shit again. So I'd listen to music because it was the one thing that I could focus on. A song would come on and I'd be like, damn, you know, I remember getting laid to this song in the back of my Volvo. Or, you know, I remember listening to this, driving around smoking weed with my friends or whatever it was, it was transportive and it brought me back to that place the same way when you smell a certain scent like a shampoo or a candle it instantly reminds you where it's from if it's a conditioner you used when you were on a trip to hawaii and you smell it again it'll remind you of that it's like sensory flashbacks and shit music did that to me and it was the one thing that would distract me but my celly was dope sick too he tries he's like constantly having to get up and just take these straight up sleazy shits, you know? They're just, they smell like cans of beans, if you know what I mean. Just like foul, poopy, chilly stench. 
You know, you know what I'm talking about. It smells like something you'd smell at a circus or something. And, and like, not in a good way. Like, the bathroom of a circus. And I'm laying on the floor listening to music, crying, hallucinating, thrashing. And he's crying himself. He's sitting on the toilet. And this guy has no manners, you know. When, you know... When time goes on, when you take a shit in jail or prison, now, yes, it's a weird phenomenon if you've never done it before. You're 23, and you have to take a poop in front of people. And you're kind of like, you kind of put your head down, you don't want people to see you, you're ashamed. And you kind of do it in, like, a hidden way. You know, maybe the person, the other inmate is in the same room as you. But, you know, you kind of, like, cover your package up. You hunch over. And that offers, like, some sort of veil so that people can't really see what's going on. My celly took his foot, his, pa his pants were around his ankle. He's sitting there. His stomach's just kind of, like, flopped out. And I can see his little uncircumcised pisa cock. And he's sitting there shitting that nasty, rancid shit that I was describing. And he's crying. So I'm watching a naked Pisa cry. The only thing that I can look at is his dick. And I'm listening to like Def Leppard. And I'm just watching this Pisa cry. And I'm going back and forth from his dick to his face. And I'm just like, this is my reality. I want to die. He'd cry, he'd shit, he'd go back to the, the, the bed. Now, kicking methadone, time seems to just stand still. I'd look at the little clock on my radio and it would be like 3.14 a.m. And I'd be like, oh, I can't wait for them to open the door. Oh, and I, you know, but really I was probably crying. I checked my phone what seemed like an hour later and it would be like 3.21. I'd be like, oh. And eventually it got to a point where I was cold. It was really cold being on the floor and I tried to like go on the upper bunk and I remember falling. My bones and everything was aching to the point already that it hurt so badly that that fall really hurt. You know, it felt like, you know, I was so weak. My bones were so weak anyway. I fell kind of like getting up into my bed. And then the second time I tried it, I just kind of like curled up in like the fetal position and tried to get myself as comfortable as possible. I, I tossed and turned all night. I'm crying. I'm thinking of my parents. Thinking of my parents holding themselves. I'm thinking about the part in Blow where he has to tell his dad all these childhood memories that he has on a fucking tape recorder. I remember a lifetime ago, you were my hero, or whatever he says. When I was hung out with Johnny that one night, he was like, he, he was doing that. He was doing Boston George insanely. It was tr trippy. He was doing like all the lines from it. He sounded just like that. But back to being in this living hell that I was in. All of those thoughts, Jenny, my parents, the time I'm going to do, everything's just hitting me all at once. And I cried. I mean, I cried so much that my face hurt, you know? It, like, it felt like there was, like, these... When you really cry a lot, it feels like there's these, like, stinging lines. The the little, like, river that it made, you know, like, going down your face. And, like, my, you know, my eyes were all puffy. And I prayed, you know, and I, and I wasn't religious or I didn't even believe in God. But I said, God, please help me get through this. It's because it's the only thing that I had. And I instantly understood why people turn to God in crises. You know, they say there's no atheist in a foxhole. And I've certainly felt that at that time. You go into this almost delirium when you're in that kind of pain. And I've described it to people before. It's a kind of pain where it's an actual color. It's this brilliant flash white. And you're in so much pain. 
those bones are feeling like they're splintering out of you and these intricate webs that twist. That's what it feels like. And it feels like it's just ripping your skin apart. And then you have the Indian rug burns. You have the hot and cold flashes. You have the diarrhea. You have the nausea. You have the thrashing. You have the restless leg syndrome. You have the fucking complete and total manic psychotic breakdown where you're hyperly sick you're just like oh, oh, oh. you know very pathetic stuff and somehow this very quiet unit started coming to life you can always tell when they're about to unlock the doors because they'll let the trustees out first you'll hear them talking in the far distance and it kind of reverberates throughout the unit. And then you start hearing that very, very, very distinct sound of a guard walking with this very like clanky keychain. And every time he manually unlocks the door, because it's not like in the movies at, at MDCLA where they press a button and the you know, it opens all of the cell doors at once. It was like that at Lompoc. It was not like that at Victorville. They had to go through with the keychain and open each cell door individually. And the cell locks were very heavy. So when they would turn them, you would hear it echo. So you can, like, it almost sounds like a domino, you know, of uh, heavy doors opening. It's this, like, crescendo crescendo and i remember being so fucking relieved when that door opened because i was going that was probably the worst i had felt in my entire life to that point and i cried so much and i was just like i don't deserve this i was confused as to why i was enduring that kind of pain and i would go to that place where it was just blank white because you've reached your threshold it, it hurts so bad that you can't even hurt anymore so you're just like i'm gonna see white now wow that is really white this is the most pain i can be in and that's what happens and i've talked to other people about it at that time when i had the radio another thing that somebody gave me was steven tyler's memoir the lead singer of Aerosmith. And I didn't know shit about Aerosmith except for like, you know, I don't even know if I liked any of their songs. I just remember them being in Wayne's World. And I was like, I'll read that. Fuck it. Yeah, I've seen Wayne's World. And I was reading this kicking, which is hard because you like have to have like one eye. You're doing like the pirate chair. I, ah. And I was reading about Steven Tyler kicking methadone. Well, I was kicking methadone. It was very meta. And the way that he had described it was that it felt like a third degree burn victim where every single inch of your body hurts and aches. Your eyelashes hurt, your eyebrows hurt, your asshole's burning. It feels like salsa pro was propelled out of it. And like I said, you have those stinging lines. So when the door opens, I need to take a shower. You know, I, I, I stink, you know, there, I, I, for sure, like I said, it wasn't even shards. It was just, my asshole was a door that opened and just shit would, I do would just have anal. So it was a constant, very consistent shit, like a river of shit that just kind of flowed out of me like a ribbon. And so I knew that I had to go to the shower. Now, they're feeding breakfast at this time. I have no appetite. I just hurry to the shower. And I remember going out into the day room where there was like a bigger overhead light. Felt like I was like coming out of a cabin into the sunlight that I hadn't seen for a year or something. And I was like, oh, I like made me weak. I was like trembling. And I looked around and I saw the Mongols, and I saw 18th Street, and I saw Hawaiian guards there all glaring at me, like, 
In my mind, I'm like, it's just paranoia, man. You're good. Fuck those fools. They can't even read, you know? And I'm like on some weirdo, pretentious shit. So I end up going into the shower. And this part has been debated in my mind if it actually happened or what happened because I don't know what went down. But I was in the shower. And I remember trying to beat off, for sure. And beating off hurt. You know, it felt like I was hurting my dick. You know, I went to like go tug on it and it just hurt. I was like, I can't even be off. And I just start, again, I broke down crying. And now I felt like because I was in the shower, I could let loose and I could just let a fart come out. So I do one. And instead of it just being what I was talking about earlier, this one had just a little bit of more oomph to it and shit went and bazooka it out of my asshole. And I looked down on the drain and there was just globs of shit on it. Just like, you know, army camo brown flavor. Fla I mean, color. And I was like, oh. and I like went down and I started mashing the poop into the, um, into the, the drain. Because I don't want to get caught. I don't want to be that guy. The guy that, the, the shit in the shower. I have, I know dudes like that. I chill with dudes like that to this day. Shower shitters. But I wasn't going to be that dude. Huh. You know, and I remember when I was living at that house in Milpas. I remember one night Jenny and I were having sex. We were smoking crack. And my boy Johnny was over there. And he had this blonde chick. That I'm friends with to this day. She probably watches Patreon. And she's like mad that I'm talking about it. But. I'm just hearing them have wild ball smashing sex. Like he's just beating it up. I'm just like, Jesus, Jesus Christ, man. It almost sounded violent. You know, it sounded like somebody was getting jumped by essays or something. But like occasionally she'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, daddy. Ah, oh, yeah, daddy. And I'm like, all right. You know, I'm all like into, I'm like cheering him on. We were actually having sex too. So, uh, you know, it, um, like, once in a while, her moans would, like, outshine ours. And you'd hear, ah! Sounded very, like, prince-ish. Like, she was hitting these incredibly high notes. And so, anyways, to make a long story short, after I go in the bathroom to piss, and there's just this horse shit. Shit, it's like this big. I couldn't even believe that it came out of a woman. It looked like a six-inch Subway sandwich or something. It looked like a literal horse shit. And I was like, what the fuck? They were having sex in the shower. So I asked my boy, I was like, hey, man, did you bring an animal in here? He's like, no. That was so-and-so. Fucked her in the ass and that came out of her. I was like, oh my, it was like that big. I mean, it didn't, like, make me be like, ew, anal's gross, but I was like, ew, that bitch is gross. Don't ever bring her back. All right, and you got to clean it. And it reminded me of that, even though I didn't get butt fucked, but it felt like that. Now, I remember while I was cleaning it, and this is the part that I don't know if it really happened or what had happened to me, but I may have had some sort of stroke, something a little more severe than a seizure, because I woke up. And my face is in that cum polluted drain again. And like half of my face is numbed. Ah. I was like, oh. Ah. 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 I couldn't feel my face. So I think maybe I had like a stroke. I was like, oh. Ouch. And like as I'm showering, I just see this these black beady eyes like look like E.T. or something. I was like, oh my God. Are you going to rape me? And he's like, hey man. And he's like this big old fucking essay. It's a big old show. He's like, hey dog. When you get out of the shower, your people got to get at you, dog. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like, no, um, 
I'm sick, man. He's like, I know you're sick. You kept all the whole fucking unit up. You know what? And he just left. Before he could, like, stop telling me what was going on, if you remember, a white dude came up, and he's like, Leone. I was like, fuck, the Mexican dude did right. Maybe the white dude will. I was like, yeah. What? You, you trying to go? Trying to se have sex? He's like, no, man. You got to see the rep upstairs. Now, at this point, I don't remember what had happened to Cash. And that, see, that's the thing. Like, I've been to this place so many fucking times. I've been to so many different units. I get the different times mixed up and i like can't remember what had happened to him but maybe he had gone to the hole and now there was some other guy that was the unit rep or maybe he was never even the unit rep may have been what it was because there was a different guy that wanted to talk to me and he was upstairs but this one essay told me that i needed to talk to my people a few moments later and i'm like cleaning shit up i'm like hey i'll be right out hey what are you doing on the floor dog that's fucking disgusting, clear, you know? And so this white guy tells me that when I get out of the shower, I got to go talk to the shot caller. I don't even know what that is. You know, it sounds like a footwear store or something. I was like, oh, yeah, all right. And I remember I did not want to turn the water off because it going from hot to cold would just be devastating in the condition that I was in because I was having such intense hot and cold flashes that particular shower because it was in the morning it still had the water heater and i still got some warmth out of it but i was very scared to turn the shower off and eventually i did and just like like drying myself like i just curled up like i you know i got in like a little ball and i put this little ass towel around me and i just kind of shivered there for i don't know how long pretty long time it had to have been and remember like my face is i'm like oh and i'm all cold and like i can't even cry my face is contorted to the point that like i don't have the ability to cry anymore so i just make noises i'm like Arr. Arr. i was really it was it was you know it was horrible so i end up finally like getting dressed and i'm like Arr. Arr. and i like see another white guy he's like hey you got to go see so-and-so, whoever the guy that had, like, the keys was, or whatever, the shot caller. That's why I don't think it was cash. I don't really remember what the situation was with this guy. But I didn't know what was going to happen. I knew shot caller, prison. I shit the shower. So, of course, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to get disciplined for. I'm like, all right, well, <sighs> how bad can it get? I'm... Half of my face doesn't work anymore. I'm kicking methadone. What are they going to do? Kill me? That would be a favor. I was suicidal as fuck at this moment. So I'm walking up the stairs. And I have to fart. And I like feel one just kind of like building up. And when you're dope sick like that, it's not normal farts. Where there's just a slight discomfort that like flags that you're ready to like, you know, have some sort of joyous relief or whatever. When you're dope sick, every single, you know, um, every time you think that you might have to fart is super scary because you know that it's not a traditional fart. There's a good chance that it'll, it'll be liquid. So you try to hold it. And as I was walking up the stairs, I was really trying to hold it because I was going upstairs and I could barely do it. I'm like holding the guardrail. I was like, hey man, what's wrong with your face? So I was like, oh, I got sick. <laughs> you know, like, I look like some sort of freak. And I'm like, just getting to the top of the stairs, and I just go, it's just in ribs. And I hear someone go, God damn. And it sends me back. I just start having a seizure right afterwards. It was like, the fart was so, so, like, ripcordish. It, like, it, like, made me seize up. And I was like, and I just started shaking. Like, I was getting electrocuted is how it was described to me. And I fell backwards. Now, I don't remember this part of it that well. But from what they told me about it, 
had a seizure going up the stairs and I fell backwards. I like did a cartwheel backwards. This is like a pretty steep, like probably like 25 stairs or something. And I just like, imagine the guys in the day room. They just see like, they first of all, they see me with my face slap. Or, and then they see that happen. And I guess what happened is I hit the floor. Like I did a backwards cartwheel down this flight of stairs. And I hit my head. And just shit. My, you know, my pants look like it inflated, you know, with shit. And I'm just sitting there. Guard runs up and I'm just like, ah, and I'm like screaming. Now, what I remember next is I'm just seeing lights scroll above me. I felt like I was in fire in the sky. I felt like I was in a fucking alien abduction movie. And I'm just like, I have like an oxygen mask on me. And I'm like, ah, 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 and I'm like looking at people. And everybody's just looking super concerned. And I realized that I'm in the back of an ambulance and that my leg is shackled. I, it like it's like cuffed to some post in the ambulance and i'm like Rah! and they're like they're like just stay strong man and like he like puts his face his hand over my face so i like ah, ah. they end up taking me and I, I barely remember getting to the hospital but i know that they, they end up taking me to white memorial hospital which is um like probably like the biggest hospital in east l.a and this is, I'm going to go, you know, deeper into this part than I did before. Um, so when I get to this hospital, White Memorial is a super ghetto hospital. They have like lockers that you can put your automatic weapons in. No, they don't, but it, they should because everybody there is strapped. You see like everybody has a bulge and you're like, no, that it's a, that it's a gun. It's that kind of place. Super rough. A lot of gang members go there. And right when I get there, I got escorted by the ambulance, by the EMT, and also um, a couple guards from NBCLA. When I get there, they put me, they take me out of the ambulance. I have, like, oxygen on. I'm like, ah, and I cannot communicate. I'm like, oh, wow. And they put me in a wheelchair, and they cuff me both hands to the wheelchair and it look, just looks ridiculous i look like i'm like crucified but it's mobilized or something like, i'm like a mobile crucifixion i just have my arms like this and they're like pushing me and i'm like ah and everybody in the hospital was like looking at me like i was some sort of like defective hannibal lecter or something ah. and they brought me to some like psych ward part of the, the hospital, not because I was going through mental health stuff, even though I'm sure that I was. But that's where they keep people that are coming off of drugs. Now, I learned later that it is very, very rare for them to send somebody coming off of something to the hospital. What saved me is that I fell down the stairs, you know, and I had a seizure and my face didn't work anymore. I'm like, that's not believable. I'm miserable. So they believe me. And they end, so they, they wheel me into this room. They like, these guards like lift me up. I remember they're like, God, he stinks. <sighs> Smells like that black one that we picked up last week stupid black person, you know, and I'm just like, Jesus, you know, it's like these super redneck ass guards, so they put me in this bed, and they shackle each one of my, so my legs are spread open, it looks like I'm giving birth or something, I'm like, my legs, and then they take my other hands and cuff them like this, so now I'm like crucified, each foot and each hand is cuffed to a post on the on the hospital bed. Uh, I felt so sick. I felt so sick, and those handcuffs were so cold and so tight, and it just made everything feel so much fucking worse, you know. 
the, doc the doctor comes and he's like some super like if Luigi from Super Mario Brothers was a real person but a doctor and not Italian but like Persian or what I don't know what ethnicity this guy was. He comes in. He's like he's like hello. Uh, but what are you coming off of? And I'm like everything. He's like we need to be more. How do you say? Specific. You need to be more specific. So I tell him, I'm like, look, man. I'm coming off. Mop it down. Heroines. You know, I'm starting to list off all the shit that I'm coming off of. So this guy's like, the, the methadone thing. What's interesting is that benzos and alcohol are the only drugs that can kill you from withdrawal. I'm sure you can die from methadone and heroin withdrawal, synthetic opioid withdrawal because of dehydration, but the withdrawal itself won't shut your body down. But some, for some reason, when I mentioned methadone, this seemed to peak his, I mean, it seemed like there was some urgency with that. He's like, methadone. <sighs> what was your milligram? And I'm like, 180. He's like, okay. And uh, what was the name of the clinic that you took the methadone? I'm like, Aegis in Santa Barbara, California. Oh, Aegis. A-E-G-I-S. And I'm probably telling the story where, like, I'm communicating to him better than I actually was. I'm not bullshitting. Like, half of my face stopped working. So I was like, I'm, like, trying to explain to him all this stuff. And, um... Uh, He's like, okay, we must get verification from your methadone clinic, and then we get the verification, and we can treat you accordingly. And I'm like, are you going to give me anything? No. So he left, and I'm just like, ah. And they're like, the two guards that I'm with are super immature, and they're like fighting over the remote. No, come on, let me watch. I want to watch hockey. I want to watch this. Yeah. I'm just like, guys, you know, I don't want to hear this shit. Later, the nurse comes, and she's like, hey, good news, they're going to give you something. I was like, is it an ibuprofen? She's like, better. I'm like, better than an ibuprofen? Now you've got me curious. What are we talking? T3s? T4s? What's up? She's like, you just hang in there, okay? I promise it's going to get better. I'm like, it's part of my language, but bitch, if you knew the condition that my life was in, I'm looking at 10 years. My girlfriend just got raped pretty much outside. I'm coming off the worst drug habit of my entire life, and I'm dying. It's not going to be all right. I'm like trying to tell her that, but it's just like, oh, oh, oh. she's like, all right, I'm going to go. If you're not going to be kind, I'm going to go. So she ended up leaving. When the guards is like, hey, uh, what, how do you pronounce your name? I'm like, Leon. All right, all right Leon. It's Leone, but they call me Leon. Hey, man, it's 3 o'clock. Uh, we can take you for your daily walk if you want. I was like, uh, I'm like thinking, my daily walk? What the fuck? You know, they treat you like you're a golden retriever or something. So I declined the, the walk. I didn't want to go on it. And what happened is this is back before you could just like take a picture of a contract or something with your cell phone and send it very easily to people. Back in that time period, they still had to fax stuff. So what ends up happening is hours go by. I mean, and I'm feeling every single hour, of, every sec single second of this. Finally, the doctor comes. He's like, Leon. I'm like, nah. Now, my face is kind of going back to normal at this point, a little bit more. Like, it's like not as insane as it was right when I think that it happened. Because I, that's what, you know, I, that happens to people that have strokes. And there's all sorts of like really gnarly shit going on. There's like a storm inside my head at that point. So, anyway, the doctor ends up coming eventually. He goes, Mr. Leon, I've got to. I've got two methadone here. And he hands me, like, uh, it wasn't 180. I think it was 15. Gives me 
15 methadose 10 milligram pills, you know, which are basically um, methadone. It's just the brand name is methadose. So he had misunderstood me. He thought that... that I had just come in off the street. He didn't realize that I hadn't used methadone for a little bit, you know? The last dose I got was five milligrams. I was on 180 milligrams before I had ever, um, before I went to jail that time. So he gives me this 15 methadose pills and I just take it, no water, just start chewing on them like a straight up dope feel. They're like falling out of my mouth like Pez. And I end up getting really nauseous and I throw up, you know, they had, now, at this point, I was uncuffed. I had, like, one free hand, and I'm like, <clears throat> and I just puke in my hand, and I, I'm not going to let any, not even a drop of that shit waste, and I end up just re-eating my vomit in front of the doctor and the two guards, and they were straight up mortified by it. They were like, um, uh, he, you know, he doesn't usually do this, doc. I don't know. He's, he's been acting real funny today. You know, they were, like, embarrassed um, by my behavior. Now, it didn't take long. It took maybe, like, I remember 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, it kicked in. After all that hellacious shit that I'd gone into the cell the night before, the methadone kicks in, and I just feel this wave of, like, wellness going through me. I want to start, like, doing yoga poses and shit. My mouth, like, returns normal. I'm like, oh, guys, I didn't realize you're here. No, I'll be quiet. Go on with your conversation. I'm just listening. I'm like, wink at them. And they were tripped out because I went from being a complete, like, out of my mind kicking to, like, having a personality and, like, cracking jokes with them. So, I found out quickly. That, oh, my God. I'm so tired. I'm like, crush. Oh, my God. It's just been, I've been so busy lately. <laughs> So I thought I was getting less busy. I've been getting more busy. I've been sitting on a, my keys for like an hour. That's comfortable. You deserve it. The way that it worked is these guys had... Um, these guys would get paid like $1,000 each a day just to sit there and babysit me. So all of these guards loved it when people got sent to the hospital because they made all this extra money. And... I started becoming good friends with these guys. Yeah, they'd like tell me about sexual conquest. They'd be like, okay, check it out. <laughs> I was with the redhead the other night, right? Right? And I'm like, right. Right, Bob, right. Keep going. I've never had a blowjob from a girl that used so much teeth. It was whack. Like the other guy's like, yeah, yeah, it sounds whack. What do you think, Ryan? I'm like, well, I mean, whackness is relatively suggest <laughs> uh, subjective, right, guys? All right, of course. We all start laughing and shit. Sorry, I fucked that up because I'm that tired right now. Um, so I, like, became friends with him. It's just an example. We would, like, joke. We had this banter, and we'd talk about sex. And, like, back then, MySpace was around, so they were, like, looking at my MySpace, and I started telling them the stories, and they got really into my stories. You know, I, had, I didn't even have as many then as I do now because I hadn't even been to my first term yet. All I had was like those youth programs like where I was like getting my yeets lost like on a on every weekend. Even on weekends where like I'd already lost my yeets, I just pretended. I was like, hey, hey, I'm new. I just want everyone to know that I still have my yeets intact and I'm trying to fucking lose them, homeboy. You know, and everyone's like, oh my god, I love the new guy. He's just... He's about that yeet shit. So, oh, God. Mm. Sorry, I'm crashing. I had a long ass day today. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll continue this video when I'm, we'll, we'll continue the storyline when I'm not as exhausted. Just fatigue just hit me. It's been a long, 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 but I love you guys. I tried to get it in anyway, but I was really tired, so it was difficult for me. But that doesn't matter. It's not your fault. It's mine. 
I really appreciate you guys, and I really, really, really do, and I'm grateful for everything that you guys have done for me, and I'm grateful for everything that's going on in my life. You know, it's like a really positive time, and I hope that I can impart that on you guys, and I hope that I can provide entertainment, because I'm happy right now, and when I'm happy, I want people around me to be happy. And that's it. I'm not like, what are you saying, dude? Just end the video. Fuck, you already blew it. Just, you know, I'll try again tomorrow. All right? All right. Collaborate.